Hangers to another for Jangers and Wall Hangers Radio Network production. Uh, what was once known as a notification tone will be silenced. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Contagers and Wallhangers went live? Huh. <laughs> Last time, I remembered to silence my phone beforehand. And we'll remember that in the future. Thank you very much. This is a learning lesson. <laughs> the more you know. Okay. So, welcome, everybody, to another another Contagers and Wallhangers production. We used to be known as Matt Man and the Old Man, but last week, we went live at comic universe at Folsom PA with Frank Link, the comic owner. We had a great time. And our new podcast buddy here, Kelly Collins, the Kells, is joining us here. And it just, especially with everybody on this couch, jizz, it... <laughs> <laughs> and you can't see Link, but Link's in, the, Link's in the back there. So we got a full cast here. And it just didn't seem right to not have a name for everyone. In this podcast, and Mad Man and the Old Man, that just seemed a little bit, you know, too, like neon light sign for me. So I had a great idea. <laughs> the Try Force, T R Y Force podcast. <laughs> because you know we try to give you the best in gaming, movies, TV, comics, and. Everything bullshittery. Um, well, this is where you'll know we'll, we'll force a square peg in a round hole. Get used to it. Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to start off this podcast as an announcement of sorts. Is that me and a friend of mine, Joe Palladino, are starting a different kind of um, experience for people. It's called Tales of the Crypt, it's, uh, where we started a production company, which is Ripped, Meet, uh, Ripped Productions, <laughs> you know. um, and it's called Tales from the Morgue. It is a new animated horror project, and uh, I can't really go into details, but it's going to be something special. We do have a fundraiser right now. Uh, for Tales of the Morgue t-shirts, it's www.customink.com backslash fundraising backslash Tales from the Morgue. Uh, we'll have the link in the description below for everyone in the podcast world as well as, you know, in the description or comments of this live cast. It's everybody in the future. There's Somebody's call. calling you. What? We have a transmission? <laughs> Is it Jesus? Is it Jesus. Or no. Jesus. I'll take either. It's Mr. Tyler Coleman. Mr. Tyler Hi. Coleman. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hold on one second. We're fixing things. Who am I? Speak to. Let's get some names. <laughs> so, I am Matthew Bucaro, the Madman. We are in the, uh, we are Projangers and Wallhangers, a podcast. We do gaming news as well as, well as everything else is um, oh, comics Bucaro. and. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to look at the comment. It's my brother Steve work. in the background. That didn't work. We're, you know, we're a special podcast, if you couldn't tell. I see. And, uh, and as well as Chris. Kelly and Chris in the background. Chris Bristow. I'm Chris. Um, I'm, um, I am uh, referencely uh, as the old man, as Matt calls me. Mm -hmm. Even though now I am the oldest, I believe. I'm the oldest. We'll call you the... Uh, Wait, oh, God, how old are you now? I'll be God, 40 this year. Oh, yeah, he's older. Never mind. He's older. <laughs> You're just second rate. <laughs> so, do the you want to go with him and Z Zone? Hmm? Yeah, we can go with, right, with, right with him, man. All Absolutely. Right. Let's go into All it. All right, Tyler. Started. So, first, first, I wanted to kind of just go about a little story. Before I even met you, and you know about this, well, actually, when I met you, I met him in college. So, I lived at a college in a dorm room. Oh, that I didn't go. That I didn't go to that college. Uh -oh. Oh, I went and okay. took tests in their classes, and didn't even go to that college. It was the coolest thing. So my best friend at the wasn't time wasn't there a movie in the eighties about that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was called Soul Man. <laughs> <laughs> so before the, when I met Tyler, Tyler's one of my best friends, good friend, long time, known him 
10 years, 11 years, 12 years. I went to, uh, so I, I actually went to University of Delaware. But my best friend went to Goldie Beacom. Go he, Cox! And he, uh, he actually was a Marine, so he came back from Iraq and was a 22-year-old freshman. So he got this whole dorm room to himself. It was made for four people. And he was like, you know, I don't like being alone. Come hang out with me. So I ended up living at the dorm with him at Goldie Beacom. I didn't go to Goldie Beacom. And that's when we met these guys, Tyler, these all my other friends I had still talked to. And they were... We were the, the cool kids because, you know, we're the 22-year-old. We can buy the beer. There you go. So, I'm, I'm not that, lying. I'm not Tyler. I'm not I've lying. I've been that guy. That's not wrong. That's not wrong. <laughs> we were uh, good people, but we were a very bad influence for a while. Um, we, no. we're As probably, all young adults are. We were probably the reason why a few of these guys couldn't graduate. Uh, I mean, it would be like, I got to study. No, we got beer pong today. No, I got to study. Yep. I got to study tomorrow. Yeah, we have beer pong night on Tuesday night. Like, who the hell does that? Uh, we do. Everyone does. <laughs> our family does. I mean, so, we, we, we do spaghetti night on Wednesdays. That was our spaghetti night growing up. Yeah. It's because of Pizza night on Fridays. Because Fridays. of a Prego commercial. Pizza's always on Fridays now because, you know, now yeah. we have Taco Tuesday. <laughs> you know. So, we don't want to know about your personal life. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how I met Tyler. Is he lived in the dorm room next to where I lived and didn't pay or go to the school? Like I said, though, I did go to one of the classes. My buddy had a had a psychology uh, test final. I think no, actually, no, I think it was a midterm. And I was like, you know, what, fuck, screw it. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna go into this uh, taking this test because like nothing would make it better seeing this teacher scroll through every single one of his his books of trying to find my name in his book like what the hell class is this dude in and i really wanted i never got found out what i had but i really wanted to know how i did on that test i think i used it anyway so i met tyler because he was in the dorm room next to it which with people i still talk to as well um tyler was always playing games he lived video games i remember starcraft uh, I remember, he, oh, yeah. He, oh yeah, we played some StarCraft, but what really got us together as friends was a few of us started, it was Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. I don't know if oh, any of you guys God. remember this. Uh, it was, yes! It was, yeah. it was one of the best games because it was one of my first games to play where it was a, a, a first person shooter where you had, you, you had a job, you know, medic, uh, you know, a sniper, whatever you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and he was so good at it, it pissed me off. <laughs> he was so good. I mean, we were all so good at that. We did, I mean, we started a clan. We were going to do some tournaments. And I and Tyler backed me up. I think we would have won. We would have won these tournaments. Uh, no, we would have gotten asked. Damn. No, wait, wait. Shut Tyler, down. Let me rephrase that. Tyler, you would have won. Everyone <laughs> else would have lost. Uh, the year that we played a lot and the year that we were looking at doing tournaments, um, QuakeCon, the big event in Dallas, they had a, like, half a million dollar competition for enemy territory and i seriously considered entering this but i had played against some of the other teams there before just like for fun you know screaming and they kicked my ass every time so i knew i just knew if we went we would have spent all that money to go out to QuakeCon just to get wrecked so you know i'm thinking about it and some of the best things that video games could actually do especially nowadays with online and, and multiplayer games is uh introducing new friends like we yeah. met, what was it, in our clan, I, I don't think for the first two years we even knew his name. It was just Natty. Because yep. we were in the AA clan. I was Guinness. I think, I can't even remember. You were probably Yost because you never changed it. Um, yep. Everyone, uh, Matt was vodka, or Matt was Mickey, somebody else was vodka, someone was Yingling, and he was Natty Ice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you were definitely a college kid. And he he flew out. Where did he live? He was in, uh, I can't Carolina, remember. Carolina, I think. Yeah, and he and he came up to visit us and, and hang out with us for the weekend, and it was cool. Like we never met this dude except playing this game, joined our clan because he would play with us all the time on our server, yep. and then became friends and came up and hung out with us and got drunk with us during the college weekend. It was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, Tyler was so good at every game that it made me so angry because no matter what game we played, he'd win. And and and, and now it, the thing that makes me even more jealous and angry about it, but I love it at the same time, is. The dude never touched a sports in his life, football, basketball, soccer, nothing. He joins a, a fantasy football league, and of course he's a video game developer, he knows all the numbers, how to crunch these numbers here and there. Next thing you know, he wins our fantasy football league because he just freaking crunches numbers and does graphs all the time. And it makes yeah. me <laughs> this year he finally won. Um, 
yeah. <laughs> I won, so I won the Fantasy Baseball baseball League the very first year. My first year playing, I had that beginner's luck. Um, but that was, I mean, baseball's so much about looking at numbers and, like, you know, money ball is literally about baseball, right? So it's a lot easier to do that with baseball than football. I hated baseball. I tried it once. It's terrible. Yeah, it, it's way much. It's so much more because, you know, every, every day you have to set your lineup. It's like hockey. Yo, so Perfect Dark. I remember you playing Perfect You guys all remember the game Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark, yeah. That My was... friend Bill and I, we used to play Perfect Dark with on Perfect Sims, six of them, and yep. it was just me and him until he, 100. He did that himself. Yeah. And I, I, I watched him win. And, and we would we would joke about it all the time because you could see him. You know, you'd have, you'd have like, the wall hack. You could see him. And you'd watch them literally facing you from across the map, just running around the map facing you. And, um... This dude was so good at that. Your your gamer tag was always Yos or Yosarian. Explain yeah, that a little bit. After enemy ter territory, it still is. I play Rocket League as Yosarian all the time now. Oh, so you kicked nice. my ass last night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it when I'm, when I'm playing like Rocket League, I'll get messages once in a while. Someone will be like, oh, Yosarian, catch 22. Like, I get that reference. And it's always like, hey, yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. But now I just saw that I think Hulu's doing a show, Catch 22 show. So now I just know it's going to be like, every, I'm going to start seeing a bunch of Yosarians about, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to put them all in their place. <laughs> <laughs> Most le definitely that. Um, you also, I mean, before you got into game development, you were building computers. You helped me build mine maybe 12 years ago. Um, I mean, I have a whole bunch of PC parts in my, well, in a spare room right now that I just ordered. I just uh, upgrading the Mac computer. Um, just running a i5. Uh, what was it like a 75 uh, 75k uh, GTX yep. 970 MSI Z270 motherboard with uh, 16 gig Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM and a thousand watt power supply with a decent cooling fan. Nice. And the radiator setup. So. <laughs> Just gotta put it together, man. I got a nice up upgraded setup there, and uh... yeah, the big thing for us, a lot of the computers that I have are they have to be GTX 1080s or higher uh, for VR capability. Okay, that makes sense. So, like to run the Vive and the Oculus and stuff like that, you need a really, really top end uh, video card. And the real problem has been for the past few years. Getting those 1080s has been so expensive because of Bitcoin mining. I knew it. I knew it. I know a miner too. Spike Tech TV is a little uh, streamer, and he, he was just touting <coughs> money all the time. I knew that was the reason why it was so expensive for me to get a new goddamn graphics card. Yeah, just say, why yeah. does that affect that? I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> because they buy a lot of graphics cards. They'll load up a motherboard and just run it for mining. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, and so the graphics cards are far better for Bitcoin mining operations. They're far more efficient at it, so it's the way to do. Yeah. Do you Are you been doing any kind of Bitcoin mining yourself? Uh, I played around with it a few years ago. Uh, I made a good bit of money in like a matter of a couple months. Yeah, I did hear I that like you can actually make like some people are making tons of money. Off it's an it's a really up and down market. Yeah. Yeah, so back in 2016, right when it took off and it hit like that 10K Bitcoin, I got into it that June, I think. So I was I was investing in Bitcoin when it went from four grand to 10 grand, mm. and I knew it was gonna pop. Like I knew that was a bubble. So I, so I got rid of all my Bitcoin, I sold it all, and, and I came out probably like a couple hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars ahead. A proverb my dad always told me, Kid, pigs get fat, but hogs get slaughtered. You saw the game, and you're like, fuck it, I'm out! <laughs> yeah, yeah it, was, it was probably lucky timing, too, because I just, I needed my money back. I needed to start using it for development reasons, so timing-wise, it was just like, alright, I'm going to do better with this money in my wallet, you know, spending it on game dev stuff, than it is sitting in some Bitcoin exchange, so... So, Retora Computer Services is your company. That is your company. That was my company, yes. Was that was Retora Games. Okay, Retora Games. Now, how did the name yeah. Retora start? What's that? How did the, the name Retora start? Uh, as far as I remember, it was when I was about 10 or 11, 
And it was the name of my first successful city in SimCity. Nice. <laughs> okay. So, so I, well, I probably that could have just like slapped in random letters, you know, just <laughs> made something that sounded cool. And I just remember spending hours, like weeks on this city. And it happened to be Rotora. And then every future game, whenever it asks you to like name your town or your city or your building or whatever, I'd always use that name. So it just kind of stuck with me. So SimCity 2? Or 2000? Uh, that would have been SimCity 2000. Yes! Yeah. I snorted! <laughs> that was a good yeah. year. That was a good year, too. That was, good. That was a good one. Arcos. I, yeah. I remember distinctly, without cheating, I got to, like, six Arcos, and, like, that took a long time. That but... was... That was, uh... <laughs> that was 95. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. It was, I think it was on the Mac, too. I don't... I don't think we had a PC when I was a kid. I remember having SimCity 2000 on the PS1. Uh, we had it on. Yeah, yeah. It was on the consoles as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I, I remember Retora when we were in college. You still had the name, and when you end up living with me, at in Cleveland Avenue in Delaware, um, yeah. me and you did a little venturing with what was that company that we worked for? I don't know. If... So yeah, I I got it was like yeah. on my 18th birthday, like literally on my 18th birthday, I got a phone call from this company. They wanted to hire me to fix computers in the area. And it was the worst ever. Got, like, I don't know how they got my info, but they needed me to be 18 to hire me. So I get a call on my 18th birthday, and they're like, we want to give you a job fixing people's computers. Fantastic. And what they did was they would go around and fix anything that was under warranty. Like, go to people's houses and, like, swap out your RAM or whatever. So Kelly and I would do this thing where I'd go to places and, like, show up at someone's house and just, like, swap the RAM out on their computer and do it for Dell or, or HP or, you know, whoever it was. Um, it's just they didn't have anyone in the Delaware area, and they hadn't for years, so they were so desperate. That Whoever was the worst, though. It, it was like a joint pay. called me right at my birthday to be like, let's do this. I just remember how sh shitty that pay was. But I do remember one story where I almost got eaten by a Great Dane that fucked horses. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yes, that is a true story. <laughs> okay, you run, run this back. So yeah, we I went to a you. house. Yeah. This house we had to go <laughs> install... Uh, like a video card and a TV, like a big screen TV, I think it was, something like that. I believe that's what it was, too, because we couldn't get the yeah. back off of it. It took us like an hour to get the back off of it. It was at some that's farm of some rich, couple, some rich couple. They had a great name that was like, oh, it's, they're like, oh, it's a sweetheart dog. Oh. And, they always say Yeah, and I go, to, a sweetheart dog I, go to, I go to pet it, and I have two dogs. I've always had two dogs. I've never been scared of dogs. But when a great Dane jumps, leaps at you, and and snaps at you, <laughs> that thing could just take my hand or my head right off. And it was a scare. I screamed like a little girl. I'm not going to lie. It was, I, could, I could not make that noise that I make again, uh, that I made that day. I could never make And they were all just dying laughing like it was the funniest thing. Yeah, they were all dying laughing like it was the funniest thing they've ever seen. And I'm like, dude, I just okay. almost died. And then the one guy that owes dogs was like, yeah, you know what he does for fun? He goes out there and has sex with the donkeys. I'm like, are you serious? Now that's a that's, that's a, a big dog. That's a red herring, sir. You said horse. You What's said that? horse. <laughs> horse and a donkey are two separate things. All right, not to be all fucking you know animal planet about Listen, this, but well, they crikey. are separate things. Regardless, it's a big dog. It's a big dog. That was the funniest. You know, it was the funniest for everyone but me experience we've had with that. Now you've been developing games for how long now, Tyler? Uh, so I graduated from school in 2012, but I officially left to kind of come to, to school to learn to make games in 2009. So if you count school 10 years, if not <laughs> six or seven, I guess seven probably seems right. right. And where did you go to school? Uh, so I went to school in a place in Phoenix called UAT, the University of Advancing Technology. Um, so it's like a little tech school. All uh, the degrees were like digital video, robotics, network security, games. Um, so it's like a whole, all the different kind of tech degrees. And that's all the school focused on. Nice. And you learned a lot there to develop uh, Merchant? Yeah, yeah. So I think the biggest takeaway well, my time there was just being surrounded by other people making games like really got me like driven to focus on it and make it my like core life focus so you've been in forbes 20 under 20 was it the 20 under 20 no nah, man nah. Was at, at 10 <laughs> 10 at what 30, 30 under 30 yeah oh, well, that's still an accomplishment man 
Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. 30 out of 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. that. That's yeah. not an accomplishment. Where, where's where's the hang-up button? Like, I can't even drink yet. <laughs> I was on Forbes 10 under 10, so that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so, so um, tell us about Merchant, man. Um, what, how you start, like, how did, when did you start it? Where did you get the idea? You know, where, where, what is it for? Um, what's its future? That kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, Merchant came out in the end of 2015. Um, after years and years of, you know, kind of wanting this to make this game, it was the game idea that made me decide to go to college because, like, it seemed like a solid game idea and I wanted to make it. Uh, and it went through a bunch of false starts. You know, I first went to college and I was learning how to program and I tried to make it. And just, I did not have enough experience. Uh, you know, my my ideas, the scope of my game idea was way larger than something I could take on as a student. Um, so it took a couple tries. Um, and then finally we, you know, myself and some other developers got the game out in 2015. Uh, it's going pretty strong. I mean, it's still doing pretty well. Uh, and now we're working on the sequel, Space Merchant, which is essentially Merchant, but in space. What, um, we you explain what Merchant is a little bit? Oh, yeah, okay, so Immersion is a game where instead of being the heroes, you know, instead of being the guy going around killing everyone or, you know, the, the main character, you're, you're kind of the merchant that lives in that town that buys and sells all the junk. I love um, that. It's a good idea. But from, that, that. from <laughs> that perspective, you actually are kind of the person in charge of, of getting the player forward, getting these heroes forward, because you're the one paying them to do quests, you're the one giving them better equipment, like selling them better stuff, so like... Being the driver of the economy is actually the thing that helps heroes get to the higher levels and beat the, you know, beat the final bosses. And um, what platforms is that on? It, just iOS? Uh, or... It's iOS, Android, and Steam. Oh God, I love that word. Steam, Steam. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I ask what was the? Uh, did you have any inspiration from previous games to build this one? So uh, not not really anything specifically, but uh, an interesting side story on that. Back in 2010 or 11, when I was in college and I was trying to make this game myself, and, you know, I was trying to get press, you know, talk to writers and stuff about it. Uh, right around that same time, Reseteer came out, um, which is Reseteer, an item ship. It's a, it's this game, what I just described, uh, made by uh, an Asian development team, and I was crushed because like I saw my idea, someone else had made it, and like. You know, it's just one of those things that someone else had the same idea and they beat me to the chase. Uh, and it took me like a year or two to even want to come back to making this game concept because it it hurt to see like someone else get your same game idea out there before you. And not only that, Tyler, but I can tell you before you even went to college, when we lived together, we talked about this yeah. game. We, we yeah. I remember he had this idea yeah, and I have years before he went to college because we talked about it to the point where he had me... Because he knows I can draw. He knows I'm a good artist. Yeah. He had me doing um, concept art for him for this game. Mm -hmm. yep. See, that's a good story. Yeah, that, I that's had a good docs and stuff all the way back to like 2008, 2009 for specifically making a game named Merchant with all this information. So, yeah. See, that's a good point, though, because there was, um, I believe it was, I quote him all the time, Kevin Smith, but he said, don't ever let the fact that somebody else did something that was like your idea stop you yeah. from doing your idea and you pretty much prove that in full because not only did you release Merchant back in 2015 <clears throat> now you're working on a sequel so yeah. that's you're almost like the embodiment of that statement and a reason to keep going on you're doing God's work sir yeah you gotta keep on keeping on yeah so uh, lastly um, what how many downloads do you have on this thing what um, so on Android, it's about 1.2 million, and then on Steam and, Andro and iOS, it's about 50k, 60k a piece. So Android's definitely your way to go right now for you. I a long shot. Uh, Android is where it's at for us. Nice. Well, um, there's also been a lot more people going over to Android from Apple now. So that's the, another huge jump yeah. in your... I am, I am very much alone in this. Uh, most people I know, other mobile devs, they tend to have far more success on iOS. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm a weird kind of misnomer. You're just a weird in general. Of, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, Android is just like leagues beyond. And that's quite unusual for mobile devs. 
your game is the game that you're developing is something that true like hobbyists of gaming would actually know how to do which really just crosses back into hobbyists of like knowing how to like uh, root your phone and, and use it to your full potential so that's I can see that that connection yeah yeah I certainly thought about that like it it seems like it could be a game that's more appealing to like your more hardcore PT crowd and it's quite possible they exist more on Android um, so that that's a possibility as to why we're doing better on Android I think it's also just because like I push out the Android builds you know changes to the game on a far more regular basis than I do on iOS or Steam because for me like since Android has done so well for us we give it first priority and we give it we make sure to give it like all the love we can and so I think it kind of creates this like recursive loop of as long as we're helping Android Android does better so we help Android more and then it helps it grow so so what I love about I, I've had I have this game on both my phones uh, I had it on my Android and I have it on my my iPhone. I'm about to buy it. I'm about it's to a pretty cool game. It's a really cool guess, game. I'll tell you the that. best part about it is any kind of game you buy now, it's you get five lives and then you have to wait an hour and a half to play it again. Yeah. Is you can literally play if you do it right. You, you know, like you can build potions for your characters so you can go out and fight. If you do it, you can you can literally play this game for hours and hours and hours and hours and you don't. I mean, it gets to a certain point where you're fighting a guy and it's going to take you what two hours to fight him. But you while you're doing yeah. that, you're still selling your other stuff and trying to create new stuff for that character. It's, it's the coolest thing. Um, so your future is Space Merchant, which me and you talked about at, uh, well, at the uh, New Year's. I remember when I saw you at New Year's, we talked about it. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just happy to get you talking about it and hope we can help you out and stuff like that. Sure. So um, thanks a lot, Tyler. Is there anything you want to say to us? Anything else? No, um... Uh... No, well, I fuck I mean, you then. No, we won't fuck <laughs> do you or your audience, do you all want to know anything about like game dev? I did have in the one industry? question. Yeah. I had one question in particular. One stigma that there is around game development is that you're going to work like long ass hours. Like there's, it's been yeah. in anime, it's been in you know, you know, pop know. culture. What kind of work weeks are you looking at? Because I have a cousin who's actually, I think he's in, still in mobile development. What's in, is he still? I, I think he's still in mobile game development. Doing something. Um, but do you work long hours is my, I guess the question. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, unfortunately myself, because I've been self-employed, uh, when I do work long hours, it's voluntary, and it's something I've chosen to do um, for my own self-improvement of my games. Uh, when he's I not have, working long, when he's not working long hours, he's things. sucking at Top Golf. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at larger studios, on larger games, uh, and also, fortunately, the companies I worked at didn't really have a hardcore crunch mentality. So, I personally have done a great job at avoiding it, um, and the only time I have done it is by choice. Uh, however, I do know a ton of people that are burned out. I know a ton of people have really bad health problems because of the job itself, um, you know, you're talking sitting in a chair for 12 hours a day, sleeping, going right back to work, you know, all sorts of terrible issues can come from that. And if you work at a company that insists that you work 10 plus hours a day, like it's going to be hard to recover from that over the long term. So, so I, uh, I do have another question for you. But with last week in the news, we found out what a lot of people were speculating for what I've heard is rumors like over a half over a year or half a year now was the Activision uh, Blizzard layoffs. Yeah, what? yeah. So they just laid over seven hundred and eighty people off in one day. Now what I've read is that was non in game development people or personnel. So Yeah. What? So from what I understand, Blizzard itself there was no game development. Uh, layoffs there. It was pre predominantly community management, esports, you know, other realms. Uh, but I don't know if it is the, across the whole 780 employees, if it's all non game dev. Um, some of that in act the Activision side might have been game dev. Okay, I mean, but nobody really cares about Activision's game development anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> people that are working on the games, you know. What's that? 
I said I do care about the people who work on the games. Absolutely. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, that's the bad part about gaming is that a lot of people don't know that, like, my cousin that I mentioned, who was, who is a game developer, he made Fight Club, the game, the one off the movie. He yeah. made that. I have to live with that. He has to live with that. <laughs> <laughs> he made the shitty game. It's not your fault. <laughs> this isn't Nuremberg. Yeah. We're not putting you on trial for being forcibly made a shitty game. I full imagine you waking up in the morning like, oh, God damn it, I gotta make another shitty ass game. Like, yeah. I don't know. So one, of the worst, one of the worst things that happens quite often in games, and I was actually, a friend was over at our house a few nights ago talking about this. He was working in a crunch, a state of crunch, you know, working 12 hour days a week every day, like five to seven days a week, 10 to 12 hours every day. And uh, they did that for months. And then at the end of it, they canceled the game and fired everyone. Damn. Oh. So the game never even came out. No one even got to see it. Even if it was a bad game, I would rather it have come out. Like, I would rather, if working on something like Fight Club that didn't get well received, mm -hmm. I'd rather it still have been released than to it have to have been destroyed, removed, never seen the light of day. Yeah. And I know a lot of developers who crunch like that for, for weeks, for months, nonstop, only to have the game canceled and no one ever gets to see what they made. That's terrible. I would be in a you think about it, like, stupid. you know, what you individually did, maybe you made a really cool character model, right? Maybe you made the Tyler Durden model or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe the one part that you worked on was actually really awesome, and no one will ever get to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. that would crush me. And that's one of the things that, like, being indie, you know, running my own business, I don't really have to worry about that. Like, if, if my games don't come out, it's my own fault, and it's my decision. <laughs> Yeah. So, but, but also you have you have Papa Gabe though. You have Papa Gabe at least making yeah, it easier well, for a person like you to get off the ground and get known. Indies are kind of souring on on Steam right now because uh, they don't really earn their cut as much as they used to. Yeah. So, I know you've met some pretty cool people. Yeah, I met I met Gabe once actually, uh, and it was like meeting game developer Santa Claus. Who? Okay. Oh my god. Yeah, I was looking at my. Did you see both of his chins? I hear if you see the second one shadow, that means there's an early summer. If you see, if you look up some of the photos for a while, he had like this big white beard. When I met him, he had that, and it was it was like meeting Santa Claus. Tyler, listen, definitely appreciate your time, and I'm sure I will talk to you soon. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Um, I don't know. Go e go easy on game developers. <laughs> you know, we we get put, we have to put up with a lot of shit sometimes. It helps to know that there's at least some people out there that understand we are just humans. Yeah. Like Starcraft goes. Generally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I work in customer service. I completely of, understand. I've been on the side of angry players quite a few times. You know, emails telling me to fuck off and things like that. And it sucks. It sucks just like any other job, right? It sucks when someone does that yeah. to you, so... Yeah. Just... Anyone who's listening to me, think before you write. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tyler, you don't, suck. Don't be a dick on the internet. <laughs> don't be a Richard. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a Richard, Tyler. Absolutely. Thank you so much for Thanks, stopping Tyler. on the podcast, it, Tyler. I really appreciate yeah, it. No and I'm going to direct people to pick up Merchant on Android, iOS, Steam... Oh uh, my god, if I could get it on a fridge, I would. <laughs> someday. Someday, indeed. <laughs> or the Alexa model. Yes! <laughs> yeah, yeah, Go Skyrim, yeah. man! Go Skyrim! <laughs> I really want to try that, the, the Skyrim Alexa. It seems like it's fun, because it's like a text adventure, right? <laughs> it would be like, you know, like D&D. &D. Like, somebody yeah. s spelling out your journey in front of you. It does have that, uh, that appeasement. And you can change the Alexa voice to like an Irish or Gaelic. <laughs> That's cool. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be appropriate for the game, right? Yeah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tyler. And we'll have to have you on again once uh, Space Merchant gets a little bit closer to completion. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thanks, Tyler. I'll talk to you soon, man. All right. It was a pleasure, y'all. All right. Thank you. So Enjoy much. the trip, bus, buddy. So that was an impromptu little present from newcomer Kelly over here, and that was awesome, man. I abs I want to say 
that I have absolutely seen, uh, seen Merchant on the Steam store because I look into the, that kind of game, and I was just like, hmm, it might actually be on my watch list. I don't know. I have a, a, a fuck ton of stuff on my watch list. Okay. So that was actually really cool, and we got a, a nice inside look into what it's like to be in that development world. Yeah, he'd appreciate it with anyone downloading that because he's I, I know this he's been one of my best friends for a very long time and he's he's really put his ass out there and his heart on the line to, to do that. And it really would help him out to download that and it would and he 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 told me he couldn't wait to talk to us just because like he doesn't have other than his roommates, like he doesn't have like old friends to talk to like Yeah. Like like how we talk here, yeah. and it's great. So. A lot of game developers are like that. <laughs> They're introverted people. It's kind yeah. of in the nature of the business. But he was good. He was open. He was an awesome person to talk to. I'd love to have him on here again because it, 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 it's great. I'm literally going to be down. I'm going to probably look for it on Steam Yeah. because I like to add to my addiction, and I like a number <laughs> to it. <laughs> so what I... What have, what have you guys been doing since the last podcast? Because we last met in the comic shop. Since then, I've watched Dragon Prince Season 2. It's really great. If you haven't know, if you don't know, it's from the uh, creators of Avatar, The Last Airbender. And it's essentially those... It's a different twist. It's medieval twist. And so now it's, you got dragons and you got magic. And now with the se second season, you're getting even more dragons and magic. There's a little less toned down with the elfage, but there's a lot more um, development in the story. And the characters mix well. Besides the Irish elf, she really does fucking nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She has the accent, and she's an elf, and their elves have four fingers, like they're a fucking Simpsons character. Um, That's a really good accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, extremely impressed I almost got a boner. It's like, <laughs> I won't put on a wig if you ask me. <laughs> um, but I've also a tunic, maybe. <laughs> But through and through, it's a good series, and I did enjoy it. Another thing I've watched is Doom Patrol. Watched the first episode of Doom Patrol. Also saw them pop up on Titans on DC. Um, DC's hitting it out of the park with their fucking series here, man. I got to tell you, it's not just Marvel that is really doing TV well. DC has proved with Titans and Doom Patrol that they know what they're doing with a, a good, gritty... Um, superhero and with doom patrol they call it out like i know you don't want to just see another sh stupid schmucky superhero show so at first episode really well done leave it on a suspenseful note and i'm not going to ruin anything but it, it, it it's, it's good and i think uh, people should be well directed over to that i'll definitely check it out i, I didn't even watch you just anything. went home and stared at a wall no i uh I've been getting the room ready for the baby. There you go. There you go. You got three um, weeks left. Three to four. Four. Don't don't four. push it. I'm already scared enough. <laughs> no, but I have been still playing. I, I started playing. I've been doing like on my off time. I have. I did play Apex. Yeah. Um, trying that out. I I'm not any good at it. I I don't know why. I'm not any good yet. I'll get there. I usually do. Well, and you then, have that yet promise in there. So there's that. And I've still been playing Siege. It's still my game right now. And NHL 19, my franchise. That's it. I do one line on NHL. I did too. What, the, what, World of Shell? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I just like to drop in every now and then. Oh, it was so fun until you meet that team that all they do is hit you all the time when you don't even have the puck and then you don't can't do anything. They're doing their sports thing right now. That's... What the fuck is sports? <laughs> <laughs> But I, I've never uh, and it, he said the S word. <laughs> NHL, I, I've always respected the sport that it's premised off of, and I figured that would be the perfect fucking game if you're a fan of that sport. It's it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun. It's still very unrealistic um, when you play online, but the the not online version is still pretty good. I mean, it's it's still the it's the, I don't think there's any difference between when you like any. Exploited, like it's been exploited, like how you score. Yes. And every single season and year, it's exactly the same. You just go up the, da, 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 shoot the other side, yeah. and you score every time. And it's it, but unless you're playing a human goalie that knows the exploit. Yes. That's my problem with 
sports games is that really it could be like a World of Warcraft or somewhere. You just put in an expansion. You just put out an update. You make people pay for that shit. You want that player? Pay for that shit. Do a loot box system. I don't give a fuck. But you can, with, especially with games like uh, Overwatch and uh, Apex Legends, you see Fortnite people hate that word like it's fucking saying cunt or something but Fortnite and Fortnite cuts like cunt I hate that word <laughs> <laughs> I hate I'm sorry that's, I know I look I'm, that, that, I'm proud just, of myself on that one that's Thank just you. like moves like Jagger that's the comparison that you made <laughs> listen Fortnite I don't like mind cunt. people to play Fortnite and I don't mind the game no it's a lie I do I don't I mind I no, hate the game because the, you need, I can't build god damn it you need somewhere for the 12 year olds to go Okay. That's what I said. That's what I said. They flood that guest go. I said I changed my I changed my position on Fortnite because it allows me to play Call of Duty or Battlefield without hearing a twelve year old yapping in my ear. Yeah. So. Yeah. Look, I have my notes. (laughs) (laughs) And the thirteen year olds. (laughs) So Steve here has been playing an interesting, and interesting is the word I use loosely. Interesting mobile game. I'm going to give my mic over to him because it's called what? Uh, I don't remember the name of it. It's incredibly stupid and you shouldn't like it. It's um, bit something. Bit life. You have this little life and you live from life to death and there's interesting things that it comes up. It's really dumb and you shouldn't get it. But it's it, it's kind of fun. So you have your person, and your person, yeah, little lit. person. Did I see you start out as a sperm? Uh, yeah, no, that's the that's the how that's uh, the logo. That's, that's the logo. The logo is a little sperm. sperm. I like it already. Have him, uh, so the game is called Game of and the logo is a sperm. That's all you need. The logo to, is to a lot sperm, right there. You can commit crime. You can have threesomes, which you haven't been able to figure out how to Like in real life, it's hard to get a threesome. Yeah. And it ruins any relationship. Like, like in my life. life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's stupid and I shouldn't like it, but uh, it's it's there. That's, I, I'm i sold. Yeah, and <laughs> you live your life. Like he got a, you you, live a whole you know, life. he had a person live up to 120. And then they died at 121. You know what I mean? Like, <coughs> and you have to choose how that person is managing their life, how much exercise they're getting, how much sleep they're getting, are you eating right, that kind of shit. Then it, it has interesting stuff, like my three-year-old is, or what was the thing about the bar yesterday? Uh, the, the one was uh, a three-year-old boy asked the mother, the mother, they had a conversation of what the word, meaning of the word dildo was. <laughs> There's little... Uh, so it's like Things a mixture up, between like an that. adult version of Sims yeah. and a Tamagotchi. Yeah. 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 Little <laughs> Tamagotchi people. That's perverted Tamagotchi. little Tamagotchi people. Tamagotchi people. Okay. And I'm just like, all right, that's really interesting. So that, I thought that, and he's been going on this the whole the whole weekend, and I'm just like, my God, what an interesting game. <laughs> Your character got syphilis. Well, <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't be sleeping out. Oh, I told you. you. <laughs> So, but no, that's the modded version of the Oregon Trail, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> so, some uh, a little, a uh, couple little award shows happened since our last podcast. Um, the Dice Awards happened. Can I say it? Can I say it? Yeah. Can I say it? You mean the God of War show? Yeah. <laughs> God of Awards. <laughs> God of War, best game. Bet, yeah, game of, game of the year, God Awards beat out Into the Breach, which is a 2D game, Spoderman, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Return of the Ober Den. Now, one thing I liked about the Game Awards is that it turned my attention to a couple of uh, interesting games that you wouldn't notice, like in, uh, Return of the Ober Den. It almost looks like something you'd see on the original brick Game Boy Nintendo. But it goes from 2D into a 3D. You're on like a pirate ship or some shit and you're investigating or whatever. It's apparently got a really good story because it was up for a bunch for story and different stuff like that. So it brings a lot of attention to different games that you may not know you like. There were also some upsets on top of God of War winning absolutely fucking almost everything. Thank you, Windows. 
Yes, we don't want to do our update yet. Um, That's exactly what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Again? Another update? Do you want to restart now? How about now? How about now? Should we try now? Or do you want to restart now? I'll warn you in five seconds. It's okay. So, <laughs> when would you like a reminder? <laughs> Tomorrow, scary. never, or five minutes. Five seconds? Okay. Well, how about we just restart anyway? Save your shit now, or you're done. <laughs> so, it, it's been the 20th. That was like very auctioneerist. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, it's like, save your shit now, or I'm going to close down. I'm just going to close down. <laughs> you want to save your side, not going to work, just close down. It's even better. Well, I'd rather them give me a warning rather than the when you're all right. I'm just gonna log off for the night, and it's the you go. You have activated my trap card. Update. <laughs> like, god damn it! Because then you fucking forget about it 100%. until the next day when you go. Oh, I'm gonna log in on my PC, and it takes 20 minutes for it to finish fucking update. One percent, 386 style. Ten minutes. My God. Left. Two percent. Oh my God. Eighty percent for and, four hours. Yeah. And, then, and then it randomly goes anyone? No, 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 one hundred. <laughs> what is that? All of a sudden, sudden eighty became, to hundred. All of a sudden, yeah. became Usain Bolt between forty-six percent and ninety-eight. Yeah. And yeah. The last two percent takes another fifteen minutes. Yeah. He felt that shit. <laughs> So, so the first update I was talking about is the action game of the year. It was going up against Assassin's Creed, and it was going up against many of other games, Tomb Raider, and a 2D game won. Wow. Celeste. I've seen a lot of good reviews on like PS4 and Xbox for it. So. And I asked you. When God of War started winning all these awards, they won Best Character with Arthur Morgan. I will get into that in a minute. If you didn't watch the awards, you won't know how fucking creepy that was. It also won Outstanding Achievement in Story. It won Achievement in Game Design, Art Direction. It won Adventure of the Year. It won uh, music effects, sound design, game direction, and uh, the game of the year was the last one. So God Award took home a total of nine fucking awards. Spider-Man won, uh, won, which was... Where are you, Spider-Man? The suspense is killing me. Us two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying as I speak. My handwriting is fucking Move on. Move on. Anyway, um, Red Dead Redemption 2 won one as well. Red Dead Redemption 2 took out Outstanding Technical Achievement, which I guess it was a gigantic map, and that's really all you could say about a gigantic map filled with a bunch of wildlife and nothing. Yeah. Still but... more, Still more achievement than... Fallout 76. There's been a lot of people playing Fallout 76, though. though. Are there? Just on my friends list, I guess. But I, I haven't tried it. I haven't played Fallout since... 4? No. New Vegas? What came first? New Vegas 4? So New, three New, New Vegas, Vegas games, I guess. Yes, 3 New Vegas 4. I haven't played since New Vegas. So I try 4. 4 is good. I heard. I, I, I heard. What I, is it? Outer Worlds that the studio's working on now? Um, the New Vegas studio? Obsidian. Yeah, Outer Worlds. Yeah, Outer Worlds, yeah. Damn, Matt Man for the fucking win! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, let's see here. You got, uh... Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> Online Game of the Year. I bet you couldn't fucking guess the name of the winner if I fucking paid you. Fortnite. Ooh. <laughs> I know. Uh. The cringing. The cringing. Uh. The initials were Fortnite. Uh. <laughs> I mean, pretty much God of War beat out Spider-Man over absolutely fucking everything. Animation was Spider-Man. They finally beat God of War in animation. That was it. It didn't have a better story, didn't have better art direction, didn't have better fart sounds. It was fucking animation. The animation of the fart winds from Spider-Man's ass when he's swinging between city to city. That is really a special fucking power. Beautiful. You get a webcam. <laughs> then there was that whole thing where people were like really into like taking selfies with Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, because you have, you got like a bunch of the like the landmark locations like uh, the Sanctum Sanctorum and you know 
Statue Stark Tower, sure. Avengers Tower. Yeah, the yeah, horribly yeah. like PS One faced boat people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. That I will say awesome. something about this, like the, about Spider Man. Um, did you know that when it was being developed, 